Hey guys, hope you're doing good. Today, I've got a very very interesting video for all the dreamers out there. It's not a comparison between cities, but we're going to compare UK to Canada. This video would help you decide which country you want to choose to immigrate. Whether you are an international student or willing to immigrate to work and settle abroad. This video is for you. As in this video, we would compare the two wonderful countries based on various factors such as geography, as in their geographic location, education, weather in various cities of UK and Canada. We're going to quickly touch base on the different types of immigration in the two countries, the people and the crime rate, how safe is Canada and UK, and we are also going to discuss the cost of living in the two countries. So I'm sure this video is going to be an ultimate comparison between UK and Canada and hopefully by the end of this video you would be able to decide which country you want to immigrate. Hey guys I'm Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload useful videos like these. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet please consider subscribing. Also if you want to immigrate to Canada and if you have any queries you can come over to Dream Abroad Canada Facebook group. There are around 84,000 people helping each other. And also, if you want to enjoy some fun moments, you can follow me at Instagram. My ID is Dreamers Abroad. Alright, so let's start with the geography. We are not going to discuss this in too much detail, but we're going to discuss the key points so this video remains interesting. So this is the world map and UK is located over there and you see Canada over here. Clearly you see that UK is very small in comparison to Canada. Actually Canada is 41 times the size of UK. But it's very interesting that its population is close to half of UK. Population of Canada is around 37 to 38 million while of UK it's around 66 to 67 million. When we say UK we mean United Kingdom and which obviously means England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Now if you're there in UK you have a benefit because of its proximity with Europe while if you're in Canada you have the benefit of its proximity with US. Let, now let's say that you're planning to immigrate from India to UK. Let's say from Delhi to London. The distance is around 6700 km which means the direct flight would actually take around 8 to 9 hours. And for example if you're planning to immigrate from Delhi to Toronto the distance is around 11,600 km which is approximately close to double if you compare from Delhi to London. So a direct flight would actually take around 13 to 14 hours which means if you want to stay close to your home country and if your home country is India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, immigrating to UK would be a little easier because commuting would take less time. Let's discuss about weather now because when it comes to Canada it's very important to discuss about the weather because obviously Canada is famous for its harsh winter climate. So in here I've listed down the three cities both from UK and Canada. From UK I have chosen London, Edinburgh, Manchester and from Canada I've chosen Toronto, Vancouver and Calgary. We'll discuss the minimum temperatures in the month of January and February and the maximum temperatures in the months of June and July so we can get to understand about the winter and the summer weather as well. Now temperatures that I'm going to list down are from 2020 itself. So in the month of January and February the minimum temperature in London was minus 2 degrees in Edinburgh was minus 4. In Manchester was minus 2 degrees. When we talk about Toronto it was minus 18 degrees. Then in Vancouver it was minus 8 and in Calgary it was minus 32 degrees. Obviously these would be the climates during the night time, maybe during midnight or so. Talking about summers in London, the maximum temperature goes around 33 degrees Celsius. In Edinburgh around 27 degrees Celsius. Manchester around 29 degrees Celsius. In Toronto around 35 degrees Celsius. Vancouver around 30 degrees Celsius. And in Calgary around 28 degrees Celsius. So overall we can say that obviously Canada is much more colder in the months of January and February. It is also a lot warmer in the months of June and July. Please notice that transition in London. You can see from minus 2 to 33 degrees. In Toronto it was from minus 18 to 35 degrees. 
So when you come to the Canadian cities, in the first few months, it might be a little difficult for you to adapt. While in UK, it is a lot easier. Okay, now let's discuss about the immigration programs. Of course, if you don't know how to immigrate, then all of this video would not make much sense. So, both UK and Canada have got different immigration programs for different kinds of people. So, let's say that if you are a student, then both of these countries actually offer you student visas. If you actually want to start a business in these countries, then if you have the enough capital with you, of course the program requirement, the eligibility criteria, the rules would be different, but yes, both of these countries do offer visas for entrepreneurs as well. There are different kinds of visas for refugees for on humanitarian backgrounds as well. But more importantly, I want to talk about these visas for skilled workers. After Brexit, UK announced that it would change its immigration system to point-based immigration system, which is actually inspired from Canada and Australia, which means that they would also provide points based on various factors such as your age, education, work experience and many other factors as well. And Canada has already been using this system under Express Entry program since last 5 years. If you want to know the details of the UK's point-based immigration system, I've already created a detailed video about it. You can go and check it out. I'll provide the link in the description box below. But in a nutshell, UK's point-based immigration system would have one of the very crucial eligibility criteria of having a job offer letter and would provide you the work permit. While obviously Canada does provide the work permit and for that they don't have any point-based immigration system but their point-based immigration system or the express entry system is for getting the Canadian permanent residency that you can get without having a job offer letter and while sitting in your home country. So that's a really great benefit. You can get the permanent residency of UK as well, but that would be really long time, few years. By then, you can become the Canadian citizen. You can get the Canadian passport. So yes, these all reasons make Canada's immigration system a lot easier because you can actually get the Canadian permanent residency while sitting in your home country without even having the job offer. Obviously, in this comparison video, I cannot talk about too much detail of these programs. You can go on to my channel to check many videos on the Canadian immigration programs. Okay, so to discuss the cost of living, I'll take you to numbio.com. It's a lovely website where you can actually compare the cost of living of any two cities around the world. So I've compared London of UK with Toronto of Canada. So here you can clearly see that they've said that you would need around 3,800 pounds in Toronto to maintain the same standard of life that you can have with around 4,700 pounds in London. So obviously, London is way more expensive than Toronto. Similarly, I compared London with Vancouver as well and the comparison is very similar. In Vancouver, you would need around 3,800 pounds while in London, you would need around 4,700 pounds. Similarly compared other cities as well, so you would see that between Manchester and Montreal as well, Manchester is more expensive. In Montreal, you would need to spend around £3,000, while in Manchester, you would need to spend around £3,200 for the same standard of life. One last comparison I did for Edinburgh and Edmonton. So in Edmonton, you would need to spend around £3,000, while in Edinburgh, you would need to spend around £3,400 to maintain the same standard of life. So clearly we can see that UK is much more expensive than the Canadian cities. You can actually check out some minute details over here as well, such as what it would cost you to have a meal in a restaurant in Edinburgh and in Edmonton. Um, what about the groceries? What about transportation, uh, utilities? What if uh, you have to pay the rent for a one bedroom? What if you want to buy a apartment in Edinburgh or Edmonton? How much would it actually cost you? So uh, all these details can be checked here on the numbio.com. It's a lovely website. But yes, for our comparison for this video, we can say that the Canadian cities are actually cheaper than the UK cities. Okay, so talking about the people and the crime rate, it's very important to know about the people that are living in 
a particular city or a place where you're going to immigrate and also whether it's a safe place to live or not. So talking about UK and Canada, we can see that the population of UK is around 66 to 67 million people while that of Canada is 37 to 38 million. We already discussed that, right? Now the population density of UK is way more than what it is there in uh, Canada but because of its huge size. The life expectancy of both the countries is almost very similar while the official languages spoken in UK is only English, in uh, Canada it's English and French. Now of course both the cities have immigrants coming in from many parts around the world from almost all the countries so you can say that various other languages are spoken in both the countries as well but the official languages are only what is listed down here. Okay now let's talk about the crime and the safety index. So for London the crime index is 52 and for Manchester it's 56 while for Edinburgh it's around 30. So you can say that out of these three cities Edinburgh is much more safer. But the comparison is between UK and Canada so let's check out the crime index of uh, Canada. The crime index for Toronto so that's close to 40. For Vancouver it's close to 36 and for Montreal it's only 29. So you can say that out of the six cities mentioned here Montreal is the safest place but yes overall if you compare the UK cities from the Canadian cities then you can say that Canada is much more safer at least looking from these six cities out there. Okay now let's compare the education of both the countries. We will talk both about the elementary education and higher education. Let's start with the elementary or primary education. Both the countries have both public and private schools. When we immigrate from our country to UK or Canada, we want to know if our children would be able to get admissions in the primary schools. As a parent, we are always worried about it. The good news is that if you immigrate to UK, your children would get free education in public schools if you land there as an international worker. Your kids will get free education in public schools whether you land in the country on a work permit or as a permanent resident. Talking about the higher education, this section must be interesting for those international students who are willing to study abroad. Of course, both the countries have quality education, both of them provide world class education and have well established position among the world's leading study destinations. Studying in colleges or universities of either of the countries you'll have the opportunity to encounter vastly different cultural and natural experiences. But comparing the number of colleges of universities in the top 100, we find that UK has 18 institutions in that list, namely University of Oxford, University of Cambridge, Imperial College London, University College London, University of Edinburgh and all of those which are listed out here while Canada has only three in the top 100. University of Toronto which is obviously in Toronto, McGill University which is in Montreal, University of British Columbia which is in Vancouver. Now these were the three which are there in the top 100 but in the top 200 there are few other Canadian universities as well and they are University of Alberta, McMaster University, University de Montreal, University of Waterloo, so however both the countries are world's leading study destinations and provide international quality of education. UK wins this battle because of the huge list of universities that are there in the top 100. Now one very important thing to note here is that UK has only English while Canada is a bilingual country so, so in the elementary education kids are taught French while in some of the universities from Quebec and some other provinces of Canada, you can expect that knowing French would definitely be beneficial to you. Okay, so that is it. I really hope that this comparison would help you choose the country where you want to immigrate. 
Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please click the subscribe button. If you have any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to like this video and share it with your friends as well. Thanks again for watching this video.